still watching uh, Nile Cruz. And uh, the last segment, we discussed a very interesting topic about the feng shui and uh, the energy and positive energy. Now moving to positive news also and uh, uh, lots of good things about the Egyptian, uh, the Museum of the Egyptian Antiquities in Cairo, uh, which is celebrating the 114th anniversary. It was integrated uh, since 1902 and it uh, houses uh, more than 120,000 items and uh, there is a lot of good news also about having uh, the museum opening uh, late night. We'll be discussing this topic with the former director of the Egyptian Museum. We're joined with Dr. Mahmoud al -Hanwagi. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure thank you. Uh, but first, uh, before discussing this important issue, we are going to move to a quick report about the Egyptian Museum and coming back, so please stay tuned. Under the care of the Ministry of Antiquities, a celebration was organized in the Egyptian Museum on the occasion of its 114th anniversary and was attended by Minister of Antiquities Khalid Al Anani, Minister of Tourism Mohammad Yahya Rashid, and a big number of ambassadors, diplomats, and public figures. Before the celebration, all the attendants went on a tour inside the museum to check the major projects within the framework of the Ministry of Antiquities and the government through the restoration work. It's a message of peace. Uh, we are now in Tahrir Square. We're opening for the first time Cairo Museum twice uh, by night. Uh, Thursday and Sunday, we are celebrating the 114th anniversary uh, with the media from all the world, with ambassadors, cultural attaché, with a high representation from the Egyptian government, the Egyptian parliament. Uh, we are more than 500 people here today, so Tahrir is safe, uh, Egypt is safe. We are waiting back for tourists, millions of visitors, like before. A lot of events and activities been held in the celebration, including a temporary exhibition entitled Selim Hassan in honoring the legend of Egyptology and a number of distinctive performances of Reda Group for Popular Arts. This museum, even it's very aged, but still have vivid life and events, such events we saw in front of us, we celebrate that this museum, the housing of all antiquities, represented a very great culture. And he will ne this museum will never die. And we call Egyptians to know their culture, to know how greatness they were, and how greatness they will be in the future. <laughs> For the first time, the Egyptian Museum, that contains the world's most extensive collection of pharaonic antiquities, will open its door at night as a message for the whole world that Egypt is the land of peace and security. Shiro Bikir, Nile TV International. And uh, resuming the second segment of the uh, Nile cruise with uh, Dr. Mahmoud al Harwagi, former director of uh, the Egyptian uh, Museum. Hello, doctor, and welcome uh, to our show. Thank you. Uh, okay. You want to go ahead? <laughs> go ahead. Usually it's ladies first. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, so Dr. Mahmoud, I'd like to ask you about, you know, the 114th. We usually celebrate this every year, you know, the anniversary of the uh, Egyptian Museum. It's fascinating. It's well known to a lot of people all around the world. Um, how does it feel, the, the celebration this year? Uh, in fact, uh, the celebration this year was uh, wonderful. Uh, since 2002, the centenary of the Egyptian Museum, we started to celebrate uh, such uh, great occasion to celebrate the inauguration of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, which uh, established on 1897 uh, and was inaugurated to the visitors in 1902 in 15th of November. Uh, this year we celebrated the 114th uh, anniversary 
uh, it was uh, a great occasion and uh, it was a big uh, celebration uh, as we saw in the report that we invited uh, many of the Egyptologists and uh, Mesiologists, uh, all the ambassadors uh, and also uh, the, uh, His Excellency Minister of Antiquities declared the uh, announce about the uh, continuation of opening the museum in the evening yes. from 5 uh, p.m. till 9 p.m. Which is very unusual. It's, um... This was a, a, the most impressive uh, point uh, announced during this celebration. And it means a lot to the, the it, it means there is a lot of efforts going, there's a lot of employees that are going to be working day and night in shifts. It means a lot, there's a lot behind having established the lights, the, uh, you know, the expenses. So it's, it's not an easy decision, it's not about just opening in the evening. It was not an easy decision. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, it needs uh, more work of the staff. We did not hire a new staff, but the same. But we asked the staff to uh, divide or to split to be able to manage this uh, new uh, opening hours. Also, uh, there was a big uh, project uh, to improve uh, electronic system and uh, lighting system. And there were a lot of uh, efforts exerted uh, before uh, inauguration of such uh, opening yes. uh, and this was uh, it was aimed to encourage more uh, not only foreign visitors but also Egyptians Local. to fill the gap in the evening in the afternoon for those who are busy in the morning whether they are Egyptians or foreigners some families cannot have uh, the time in the morning so they can have the chance to visit the museum with their uh, kids, uh, all the family members, all, also the foreigners who are coming just for one or two days for just business. They cannot have the time in the morning to visit archaeological sites or museums. So this will uh, help uh, a great number of visitors, whether they are uh, Egyptians or uh, foreigners, to have uh, such wonderful uh, occasion to visit the museum in the afternoon uh, or in the evening from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m. Dr. Uh, Mahmoud, there was a shocking news uh, by, um, uh, of course, from the Egyptian Museum, as one of the members of the Egyptian Museum has uh, stick the uh, the Tutankhamun, the king, chins with a uh, epoxy. So, and it, and it actually did not shock the Egyptians only, but the whole world. So, can you reassure people about the status of the king right now? How is he? And his chin, of course. I would like to... How is his chin? That's, uh, that's uh, I would yeah. like to make it clear because it was not... Uh, uh, any, all information about this uh, item was not 100% correct because this was, uh, uh, I mean, the media, the international uh, media, uh, uh, they meant to have such campaign uh, against Egypt and against uh, Egyptian antiquities, uh, because we started and we launched uh, a great campaign to restore and to regain our uh, lost antiquities, our stolen uh, treasures from uh, different countries. But sir, it was a mistake. The we cannot regret it. it yes, a mistake yes, happened. Yes. Let me tell you, uh, there was a mistake. Yeah. But uh, it was not as it was uh, uh, conveyed in, or uh, yeah. As it was declared to the whole world, uh, the mistake that they use uh, just. Uh, a bit, uh, he, um, the epoxy they used, uh, the amount was a little bit more than it should be. But it is the right epoxy. The, it was, it was, 
Epoxy is uh, applied by all museums all over the world, and it is not uh, 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 a wrong material. But uh, the only the mistake was the amount. And even after uh, uh, re-restoration uh, for the false beard of the mask of King Tutankhamun, it was the same material, but in different, uh, with different amount and a different formula. So it went well? It, it, is, it is now well, and it was also well, but the amount of the epoxy, which was, uh, seems not so good, and that's why uh, we realized that it should be re-restored uh, again. Yes, but in, in, in those cases, uh, very sensitive topic, you should have, you know, the top expert doing this, uh, conservation. Uh, not someone who lacks experience maybe because it, like you mentioned the amount it has to be okay. really calculated it has to be looked at by scientists and uh, you know observing this process of conservation. You are exactly right because that's what happened in the re, uh, restoration. Okay. We give the restorers uh, enough time uh, enough uh, new equipment. Yes. Uh, the first uh, restoration was uh, made in a hurry and they had no time to to make research, scientific research, to uh, adjust the uh, material. Uh, this was uh, the mistake yes. that the restorer, they are uh, good enough but they were, they were asked to finish this quickly and it was only like uh, 30 minutes, which is, this was the wrong decision were taken by the authority at that time. But in the second restoration, there was plenty of time, uh, about two months, uh, and the restorers made the scientific research, they uh, uh, prepared the efficient material and the uh, amount and the the formula of epoxy that's why it looks much better than the first restoration so we have the experts but there was the mistake is just to the time this was the only mistake i believe sir um also talking about the uh, king uh, tutankhamun we've heard that um, the chair of the king and lots of his stuff are not the uh, real ones in uh, the uh, Egyptian museums. They are replica, and the real ones were stolen or taken or replaced. So tell us if this is true or not. Uh, I would like to ensure that all the objects of the treasures of the tomb of King Tutankhamun are originals from the tomb since the, the discovery in uh, 1922 by the British archaeologist Howard Carter. This was the only uh, complete uh, collection uh, arrived to the museum because the Egyptian government at that time in 1922 uh, decided to keep the whole collection in Egypt because there was uh, a system of uh, division between uh, Egypt and the foreign uh, expeditions and uh, excavations. So this was the only uh, decision uh, were taken that the Egyptian government insisted that the whole collection should stay in Egypt. Since that time, all the treasures of King Tutankhamun and its tomb are uh, on display at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, and they are all. Uh, I can tell you that uh, there were some uh, news uh, telling, as you said, that some originals are out of Egypt, and which is completely wrong. Uh, and you are, and all the, uh, the audience are welcome to the Egyptian Museum to make sure yes. themselves that they will. I they will be sure. able to. They will be able to know if they are or not. Is, uh, the one who said that, or the one who believes that, did not visit the museum. Yes. The, the, the museum is really rich, you know, with the amount of artifacts and, uh, and the pieces within the museum. 
Um, it's very valuable. It's a very valuable experience. What do you aspire as a former director? What do you aspire for uh, the Egyptian Museum? Uh, what changes should be done to attract more visitors and to have the experience uh, more enhanced or more, you know, a lively experience that gives the whole story? It's a good question uh, because we are now uh, the Egyptian Museum houses more than 160 thousand oh. real artifacts, not 120. Mm. Uh, this is the biggest museum. Despite the fact that there is a lot of artifacts moved to the Grand Egyptian Museum. Yes, Let me is. tell you, okay. uh, beside uh, the, this, we have two major projects. The Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza yes. and the Egyptian uh, Museum of uh, Egyptian, uh, the Civilization Museum uh, in Fustat. These are two uh, major projects. They are, uh, they will be inaugurated uh, re, uh, like the Grand Egyptian Museum will be inaugurated in two, beginning of uh, 2018 and uh, uh, the work will end in the end of uh, 2017. Uh, the Museum of Civilization will start to play the first uh, exhibition uh, within uh, by the new uh, year uh, in about January, uh, inshallah, uh, 2017. Uh, because the museum houses this huge of antiquities. So uh, some amount of these uh, artifacts will be moving to the Grand Egyptian Museum. For example, the collection of Tutankhamun will go to Giza, and the collection of royal mummies will go to the Fustat Museum. Uh, and some other uh, artifacts will move to these new museums. This is uh, a new uh, challenge for the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir Square because uh, we will uh, start to re-display, we will make a, a re-scenario of the display for the museum. In the Egyptian Museum? Here, because it will stay. So it's more, of, more or less like enhance the experience and have it a unique experience, different than the one in the Grand Egyptian Museum. Exactly. The, there is a big difference between the new museums and uh, the Egyptian museum. The Egyptian museum in Tahrir Square is uh, uh, the design and the furniture is um, belonging to the, uh, the old style and the old fashion. But uh, we having a, a project in the Egyptian museum in Cairo is to survive the museum and to keep it as it was at the inauguration at the foundation so we try to preserve the whole uh, showcases and the as it is with some renovation and some uh, 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 like we make uh, new glass for the windows with uv filters we make we uh, we repainted the walls and uh, we took, we take off the, about 10 layers of all the paint and we discovered the real uh, uh, painting of the wall which uh, was in 1901 and we discovered many uh, decorations and so we are having, uh, the project is to survive the survival of the Egyptian museum and also we have to uh, re-display and to make a, a, re, uh, scene, a new scenario for the display after moving uh, about 50% uh, uh, of its uh, artifacts to the new uh, museums in Giza and in Fustar. Yes. Dr. Um, uh, Mahmoud, we've heard uh, that the archaeological experts have announced uh, uh, that they discovered uh, a new village uh, a new ancient Egyptian village. Do you have any, any information about this uh, this discovery? Where exactly? We have no details. Every day, they every said day? they discovered a new, and it, it's going to make a change okay. in the in the information about uh, the Egyptian uh, uh, antiquities, and it will add more 
knowledge to, our, to, to the history you, that we have. Let me tell you that every day we have a, a new discovery, whether they are tombs or uh, uh, villages uh, in different uh, places in Egypt, uh, in Saqqara and in Luxor. Uh, uh, these, are, these sites are uh, uh, full of uh, archaeological sites and we still have plenty of undiscovered uh, uh, tombs and villages, uh, especially villages, because we have lack of such uh, uh, settlements or civil settlements, because ancient Egyptians, they, uh, uh, they were concerned in their second life. Therefore, they built their tombs with such heavy strong stones and or cut uh, rock stone in the mountains yes. because they believed that the eternal life is the second life so they built their uh, houses with mud bricks mm -hmm. they believed that the first uh, uh, life is so short so they dedicated their first life to serve their second life so they built uh, such wonderful tombs well, actually, Dr. Mahmoud, we ran out of time. Dr. Mahmoud, the former uh, director of the Egyptian Museum, thank you very much for joining us and welcome once again to Nile Cruise. Thank you and thank you for all uh, our uh, audience. Thank, thank you, Thank you sir. very much. Pleasure to have you. Let's move now to the upcoming report all around uh, Luxor, uh, the capital of tourism.